Good morning and welcome back to Looking Backwards, Looking Forwards. I'm C. Thomas Printer, and today we start looking backwards at the job report. Let's go to Tyler Durden over at Zero Hedge. The BLS number that just came out in July, there was 8.827 million job openings, the first sub 9 million print since March 2021. It was also the third biggest miss on record considering the consensus was expecting over nine and a half million. This continues a recent trend of every single data point in the Biden administration being revised sharply lower in subsequent months in a coordinated propaganda attempt to make the economy look stronger then quietly revise it away when everyone forgets. That's a quote from Tyler Durden and he has charts to back this up. Every single data point that was released, not only in jobs, but also in housing, has been reduced after the fact, revised lower. What is this telling us? Well, number one, the government is very bad at their jobs. Two, they're very bad at coming up with accurate data because partly that's really, really hard. It relies a lot on census data. But third, we have a continued trend lower. And so what's happening is we're starting to see that these jobs that are so abundant aren't quite the same. It isn't quite the same thing that everyone's telling us. We're also seeing that the unemployment numbers are starting to creep up. Just yesterday, we had the unemployment rate jump to 3.8%. As we've been talking, these rate hikes will act with a lag and it will be long. And now we're starting to feel a bit of the constriction to the economy. So let's not be surprised if the labor numbers and the unemployment numbers start going up as the economy and the um, stock market and the bond market are starting to show some signs of weakness. So we're just in the beginning stages of this, but let's keep an eye on this because this is definitely one of the last things to turn over. We also want to go backward and look at the Daily Wire. Spencer Lindquist shares with us a story about the new diversity internship that excludes white people in NASCAR. NASCAR. The first requirement on their form is not be white. This is part of NASCAR's Drive for Diversity program because like Patti Smith saying, sometimes love just ain't enough. The fun-loving, die-hard Southern sport of yore has not officially gone woke to appeal to sponsors and corporate masters, but it has. David Bernstein writes, and or is quoted in the article, he is a professor at George Mason University's Antonin Scalia School of Law, told the Daily Wire that NASCAR's racially discriminatory program is, quote, blatantly illegal, end quote, noting that it would seem to violate Title VII and the 1866 Civil Rights Act. Huh, who knew you can't discriminate on race? Well, it seems like NASCAR's corporate office is finally uh, getting the memo there. Anyway, regardless, going corporate and now evidently going woke helps to explain the decline in NASCAR's popularity in the last two decades. Instead of Patti Smith, maybe they should channel their inner Shania Twain and dance with the one that brought you. We also promised to follow up the Kansas newspaper case where the newspaper was investigating the chief of police and the chief of police raids the newspaper and the editor's home in Marion County, Kansas. We've attached a link showing the video where 98-year-old Joan Meyer is seen yelling at police to get out of her house. And yes, she is the one that sadly died the next day. Well, there has been no charges brought against this newspaper. And in the article, it goes on to say that the, in, the newspaper had been shining a light on some of the activities of the city council and the chief of police for quite some time upsetting people. Well, that I believe is exactly what a small town newspaper is supposed to do. In fact, this is one of the things that really caught my eye that I thought was interesting. If you are from a small town or if you, or if you have ever read a small town newspaper, they often have a section in the back that details every minor traffic accident that the police responded to and arrest. You see who got the 
DUI on Friday night. You see whose kid got caught shoplifting. And you even see reports of uh, uh, dogs barking and cattle wandering into town, etc., etc. Well, the chief that they were investigating might be mad at the newspaper because since the chief said he would no longer print these pu public notices, the newspaper started putting in there, quote, Chief Gideon Cody has seized providing a weekly report of police activities, end quote. Ah, the local newspaper butting heads with the chief of police, then the chief of police raids the newspaper. Well, we will continue to look out for more details on this, but it seems like that the chief of police, who was under investigation from his firing after a 24-year career with the Kansas City Police Department, I think we're going to find out that the newspaper is probably going to end up being very, very triumphant one of these days because it seems like that they were the ones that were the thorn in the side and doing good journalism. So we will keep an eye on this, but I'm starting to lean toward the journalist side here and it sounds like they were sticking their nose where a nosy reporter normally does. If we look forward now, <sighs> I'm out of answers on what we're going to do with Mitch and Joe. I'm referring to Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden, who Mitch McConnell froze up again this week. And, you know, in the past, we have talked about Dianne Feinstein being unable to vote and her aide telling her how to vote on the floor of Congress. She is the um, uh, congressional um, senator or representative from California. Uh, Joe Biden, we offered a new link where he had a speech about Hawaii and turned around and was looking for directions on where to go. And Mitch McConnell froze up at the mic again for the second time in the last month or so. And I will re repeat what I said then. If you have to wait to 18 years of age to vote, then at 81, you just shouldn't be able to leave. Time's up. I mean, I love Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, but they're both older and both very mentally sharp, but they're exception to the rule. And quite frankly, there are very precocious 17 year olds that are being denied the right to vote. So in order to make an omelet, you have to break a few eggs, but we just can't continue with this old person senility. Looking forward on another item here that caught my eye in the past week was another group of investors are suing Disney and claiming that the mouse in the house has engaged in a fraudulent scheme to make their Disney plus business line appear more profitable than it is. This continues from Bob Chapek's regime as the old CEO, who was replaced by Bob Iger, who Chapek replaced in 2022. Well, if we go to the, uh, the deadline, the stock hit a 10 year low as Disney is fighting a very popular governor and they're promoting a woke brand very loudly, and they seem to have priced their customers out of the marketplace. We talked a while back about how the Disney attendance over the 4th of July was quite comfortable. There was no long lines, and the, the, the visitation was at seemingly years, year-long lows. So it seems like the high prices and this fight has made Disney a little bit less popular than it has been in the past. Will we see Chapek now return the favor and replace Iger if Iger continues to make things worse? We'll have to see. But usually in these matters, the stock price and what's the shareholders getting out of their CEO determines everything, which is why Chapek was probably replaced in the first place. And lastly, we're looking forward to how a group of kids in Greystones, Ireland turn out. It's a small town just outside of Dublin and all eight primary schools parents have banded together and decided that their children will not be allowed to have a cell phone until they turn 12 years of age. My oh my, I didn't realize we were giving 12 year old cell phones, but at least they are limiting the little children from having them. The town is citing a recent spate of suicides and bullying. I commend the town for its foresight, even while wondering how we can have access to so much information and yet remain so uninformed. I personally think cell phones are a bit of a plague, but I encourage all of you to follow us on your mobile devices at Spotify, our website, cthomasprinter.com, YouTube, or on Instagram. Until next week, thank you for joining me. And remember, quote, cell phones these days are getting thinner and smarter. People just the opposite.
end quote. 